This is the Create Validations Unit in the Formulas and Validations module on the Admin Intermediate Trail. Uh, you're more than welcome to join me as I learn this unit. Or if I came across something interesting or helpful, uh, I'll include it in the description below. I think I'm also going to start including my um, solution to the hands-on challenge. I won't show you how I got there, but I'll show you what the final configuration looked like. So that way, um, when you get down here, I'm, I'm not, I won't actually go through these steps, but I will show you what it looked like. So that might be helpful for you as well. So you could jump ahead to those in the description below, or you could um, hang out with me as I try to make sense of this. Okay. Describe, okay, in this unit you are going to I should say make sense of this along my journey to become a Salesforce admin. That's the uh, goal here, hopefully. Um, which I'm just partway through the admin one, so seems to be I'm blabbering, just blabbering. Okay, let's go. Describe two use cases for validation rules. List the elements of a validation rule and create a validation rule. Introduction to Validation Rules Validation rules verify that data entered by users and records meets, meet the standards you specify before they can save it. A validation rule can contain a formula or expression that evaluates the data in one or more fields and returns a value of true or false. Validation rules can also include error messages to display when they enter to display to users when they enter invalid values based on specific specified criteria. Using these rules effectively contributes to quality data. Alright, if you do the or if you have users if you create these rules then you're gonna have better data in your database. For example, you can ensure that all phone number fields contain a specified format or the discounts applied to certain products never exceed a defined percentage. Okay. So validation rule ensures accurate data. Fine. Defining validation rules. You can create validation rules for objects, fields, campaign members, or case milestones. In these steps, we create a validation rule that fires when a user tries to save an account with an account number of incorrect length. I don't know if I like the idea of validation rules firing. Runs? I mean, it, the validation rule operates every time data gets entered. In these steps, we create a validation rule that runs when a user tries to save an account with. Well, it, it, it runs when the user tries to save an account with an account number. Okay, it runs when the user tries to save an account. It shows the error when the account number has an incorrect length. Creating a validation rule. Okay, i got to do this again. From setup, go to the object manager and click account. Okay. Okay. 
In the left sidebar, click Validation Rules, and then click New. Cool. Alrighty. It's sort of fun to, like, you can normally look at the stuff in the sidebar and it's just sort of like there. Yeah. Hmm. There's Enter the following properties for your validation rule. Rule name, account number, eight characters. Enter error condition formula. Error message, account number, must be eight characters long. To check your formula for errors, and then click save to finish. Okay, before I click save, so we could have done. Okay, insert field. That's interesting. Okay, oh, so wait, here's the functions. Okay, so if I wasn't copying and pasting, I would first take the function from here, day and time functions, logical functions, math functions, text functions, there's the length. And then, okay, so if I wasn't copying and pasting, I'd first take the function from over here, then insert field, and then operator. I don't know what the exclamation point does. And it could be at the top of the page or a field. Display your message next to the field the user should. Correct. If your validation rule checks several fields display the error message at the top of the page. This is just the account number. I think I'd want this next to the field. Uh, yeah, next to the account number field. That's the way I would want it. Okay, so if um, when you're creating your conditional formula, if you're when you're creating your account validation rule, you can cho choose where you have the error message appear, whether the top of the page or next to the field. And personally, where I I like my error messages next to the field, because then it makes it easier to fix it. Um, and that's different than. So here they have it appearing at the top of the page. Here's the validation rules error message can appear when a user types an incorrect amount number into a field. Alright, well let's check it out. Let's see what that actually looks like. Um, Let's 
it's just uh see huh. we did that that's cool Examples of validation rules. Here are some validation rule examples that you can try out yourself. Okay, account number is numeric. Validates the account number is numeric if not blank. Okay, and not is blank account number, not is number account number. Why does that logic make sense? Because it's going to look for both of these. Is numeric if okay? So, so that if it's not blank, meaning so it can be blank. But if it's not blank, so if it's not blank and it's not a number, then we show the error message. Okay. So as a user story, if And say as a user, I wanted a validation rule that confirmed the account number was not blank. There could that confirm the account number is numeric if there's a value in there. So that right data gets put in. Okay. That makes sense to me. Date must be in the current year. Validates the custom date field contains a date within the current year. I'm not sure why you'd want that. I don't understand why you'd want that. Number range validation validates the range between two custom fields, salary min and salary max, is now greater than 20,000. Okay, that's the custom fields. I'm not sure why. Okay. Okay. It validates a custom field called a website to ensure. The last four characters are an explicit set of valid website extensions. Hmm. So this is an OR function, which allows you to do any one of these. I understand why you'd want to do this. As a user, I want a validation rule that confirms I entered in the website correctly so that we have accurate data. But what I don't understand there's a lot more than just these now. Validate that the billing country is a valid ISO 3166 letter code. Okay, I understand why you'd want that. Keep accurate data on the user on the country billing code. Cool. All right, onto the hands-on challenge. I'll pause for a second here while I do it.
Oh, I'll read it first. Um, okay, to create this challenge, add a validation rule, which will block the saving of a new or updated contact if the contact is related to an account and has a mailing postal code, which is the API name, mailing postal code, different from the account's shipping postal code, which has the API name, uh, shipping postal code. So this is a new or updated contact, so it's going to be on the contact object. If the contact is related to an account and has a mailing postal code, which is an API name. So if mailing postal code So it's going to block you from saving a new or updated contact if the contact is related to an account and has a mailing postal code, which has the API name of mailing postal code, different from the account's shipping postal code, which has an API name shipping postal code. Name the, valida name the validation rule, contact, it must be in the account zip code. The contact with the mailing postal code that has an account that does not match the associated account. Shipping postal code should return with a validation error and not be saved. The validation rule should only apply to contact records with an associated account. Contact records with no associated parent account can be added with any most so mailing postal code, you can use the is blank function for this check. Okay, so if oh, I don't know if I could do this, <laughs> if the contacts account related account is blank, then. We're going to have to try to see Okay, so the rule is contact, this is what we're going to name it, contact must be in zip code Contact with a mailing postal code has an account and does not match the associated account. Should, okay, we should return the error then. Alright, let's give it a shot. Day two on this. Okay, I think I got it. I tried doing this yesterday and I I don't know. I think what I what I was doing wrong was I was just trying to like write it, the code myself and I kept on getting these syntax errors. So I don't do, I just, not, I'm not there yet. Um, but basically what I think is the, we're trying to do here is say, and, and that's going to look, um, there's this little helpful text down here to tell you what the logical functions do in case you don't know. So and checks whether all arguments are true and returns true if all arguments are true. So thumbs up. It's going to work if everything's true. So we're looking for these arguments. If account ID is blank, and the way I actually did this was using the is blank function, um, which is a logical function. And then I did the account ID by using the insert field function, going to account, and then account ID. Um, I, I think I think that's so. Basically, you know, you, you could use the. What I'm trying to accomplish there is this piece: the validation rule should only apply to contact records with associated account 
contact records with no associated parent account can be added with any mailing postal code value. So you can use the is blank for this. So that's what I'm trying to do here. So I'm saying if account ID I'm saying it out loud, I'm not sure. I don't see like associated account. I'm on the contact object. Let's just check. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I'm mailing. Oh, there. I don't see anything. Alright, so that's what I'm trying to do here. I'm not confident that, that I did that right. Mail postal code. That's what they tell you is the API name. And you could find that on the insert field contact bum, 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 mailing zip postal code. That's the API name. There. And then here, sh the, what they call the shipping postal code for the accounts shipping postal code. Um, the way it gets entered here is account dot shipping postal code, um, which I would think is important, but I don't know. Um, but when you go into the insert field, you go into the account, and then shipping postal code, that's the API name there. So, I checked the syntax, I got no errors, which was like exciting for me because I had a whole bunch of problems yesterday, which is why I gave up on this. Um, so let's see what happens. Gosh, could it take longer? <laughs> Uh Wait, hold on a second. I got to click save. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, now let's try to test it. <laughs> I'm not sure if I <laughs> <laughs> okay. I have no idea what this means. Okay, back to the drawing board for a little bit. Okay, day three on this, and um, I decided that I needed to uh, get help, so I asked the Trailhead support team, and they got back to me the next day, which was really cool. And told me that I had written the formula wrong. I feel like, oh man, I need to go back to my Excel basics or something. Basically, the formula should be and parenthesis not is blank account ID. So I used, all right, I copied it over into here so we could compare them. So I had, this is what I had originally. So I was thinking, well, if the account name is blank, then you want to run it. Um, but that's not the case. If it's... Why is it? One second. Right, I get it now. Because what we're looking for is... Um, a contact that has an account. So how do you know if it has an account? If it is not 
blank, then it has an account. And then um, that's the first part of the argument. So then there's the and, and then there's the mail. Mailing postal code does not equal account shipping postal code. Um, so that was my mistake, is I had forgotten that we have to use the double negative. Um, I'm curious, is that last parenthesis necessary? Yeah, why? Um, because we've got one, two, three. So, does the not, is this then part of the not function? Okay, um, I think I got my head around this. So yeah, this not is part of this. And basically what we're saying is, if mailing postal code is not equal to um, the account shipping postal code, then Wait, it made sense in my head a second ago. I don't know why I can't say it out. Okay, and we're going to look for all the arguments to be true. Not changes it from false to true or true to false. So, is blank. So if this is blank, that's true. We're going to look that it is not blank, meaning it has an account. And then mail and postal code, if those aren't equal to each other, I'm not exactly sure. I'm going to have to ask somebody. Because um, this isn't making sense in my head. And I do want to understand this, or just maybe go take some classes on Excel. Okay, um, let's check. Oh, fool. <laughs> Save it. Alrighty, that's it for this one. Okay, I think I figured it out. Um, and I even though I already got this, but I didn't want to explain this to myself. And is now going to say all of the following arguments need to be true. Okay, and then we're going to have two arguments. And so then the and is followed by the open parentheses. Argument one is not is blank account ID and then we have two parentheses this closes the one for the account ID and one for the is blank and then a comma and then the second argument is mail posting code is not equal account shipping postal code so if when this is true and this is true then we'll run the validation and that's obviously why there's that, that close parenthesis here, because that's closing off the second part of the AND argument. So that is how that works. And so theoretically, I should be able to go to my contacts, and I should be able to pick on Andy Young here, go to his details, 
and he's got an account name. And the details of the account are 66045 is their zip code. So I should be able to change this to, and then it says contact must be an account zip code. Huh. There you go. That feels better. Okay. I got that validation code at work and I understand it. Yay. Okay. That was cool.